Good morning, Revolution. Hey, everybody. Uh, Michael, Scott, uh, how's it going? Doing well. How are you, Joe? Uh, man, I am good. I got out on the street yesterday for the first time since March 11 and uh, joined uh, one, of the, one of the demonstrations along with Michael and some of the young communists. We had the banner and we were, you know, uh, on the front line, so to speak. Uh, tremendous uh, movement has emerged over the last uh, 10 days. Uh, since the uh, state execution, and that's what you got to call it, of uh, uh, George Lloyd. Uh, and uh, the funeral was yesterday, and the protest continued. Did you see what happened, Michael, in, in Buffalo, where the cops pushed down that old man? I think, you know, you asked how we're doing today, and my immediate response was, it's a dangerous time, but an exciting time to be living in. And I think the example of what happened in Buffalo yesterday really shows all of us how none of us are safe from, as you call it, state execution or, you know, repression from, from this police state, you know, which is a result of the Trump presidency overall. Um, you know, that it was an older white man, 75 years old, who was pushed to the ground. He had blood coming out of his head and his ears, you know, and this is just on top of, you know, all these other you know, fellow protesters, our fellow comrades who are getting arrested every night for protesting peacefully. You know, they're just walking back home, at least here in New York, they're walking back from Manhattan to Brooklyn across the bridge. And since it's after 8 p.m., you know, they have to sit on the bridge all night or they're taken to jail. That's what we're living right now. Yeah, they keep them on the bridge. Ain't that something? Ain't that something? Scott, what's going on in this country? I mean, it's well, not you know, I was... I was reading a, a really terrific essay by, or a speech rather, by, by Frederick Douglass from 1857, uh, mm -hmm. talking about the, the period right before the Civil War. He was responding to the Dred Scott decision, the, the infamous, um, uh, the black man has no rights that a white man is bound to respect. Judge Taney, and, Judge Taney, yes, yes. And he, you know, what he, what, he, what he says, one of the things he says in that speech is um, that with the expansion and consolidation of the slave power, uh, the white man's liberties are marked out for the same grave with the black man's. Um, mm. And he, he, he calls upon, he, he says that, um, you know, every time uh, an attempt is made to uh, reinforce the slave power, um, mm -hmm. the movement against it rises and it gets even more unsettled. So he's calling for this, mm -hmm. this great push to, to abolish slavery once and for all. Um, and it felt so pertinent to where we are right now, right? This, you know, this attempt to um, consolidate and reinforce the, the, the white supremacist power of the, the Trump regime and the capitalist class more broadly, um, being met with this, this rising movement that um, is, is really a movement for, for democracy altogether, but focused on the most egregious offenses against democracy, which are those committed against uh, racially and nationally oppressed people. And, and speaking of, um, what was that word you used? Egregious yeah. um, offenses. What happened at Lafayette Square the other day? I mean, Trump, they called it a Jericho walk. You ever hear about that before, the Jericho walk? I guess it's some right wing evangelical kind of thing. My buddy told me about it yesterday. He said, Joe, Google, Jericho Walk. I haven't had a chance to do it yet, but he was telling me this last night. Um, and but they attacked the demonstrations uh, on Lafayette Square, the demonstrators rather, with sun grenades, gas, horses. By the way, speaking of horses, you know the old comrades uh, from the '30s said they had a way with these old ladies. They said. So we were demonstrating in the 30s and 40s and the police would ride into the demonstration with the horses. We had something for them. And what did they have? These long uh, 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 weaving needles. You seen those? And, and they would boom, jab them into the poor horses. Ooh. And the horses would, you know, rear up, you know, mm -hmm. and that was the end of the mounted, uh, <laughs> I'm not advocating that. Don't don't get me wrong. But this is what these old ladies 
you know, but they said, yo, Joe, you got to do what you got to do when you're being attacked. Um, they used the army, the military poli police to clear the demonstration so that Trump could take a Jericho walk and hold up the Bible upside down in front of their church. And, and um, some of the people that were cleared out were clergy members. Clergy members, cleared reporters. Cleared out in front of their own church so that he could pose with a, yeah, with an upside down Bible and try to look like a, whatever. Michael with a billy club in one hand and a shield, it was just banging them. And, and so, but the uh, effect of it boomerang, it, 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 it you know, you have now a revolt of the generals. The head of the Joint Chiefs said, no, I must speak out in the Atlantic. And then the former Secretary of Defense said Trump is a threat to the Constitution. And now the Senator from, um, she's the only one that, that, that has any guts uh, from Alaska. Murkowski. I put guts in quotes, you know, <laughs> all of them needed to stand up. I mean, Trump before this was organizing militias to march on demonstrations, uh, to march in demonstrations against stay at home in Michigan and uh, uh, Virginia and a whole number of, of, of other states. One writer said uh, it was a marriage uh, of the Trump administration uh, and these white and these right wing militias, supported and organized by you know big capital. That's a very very dangerous development. But Michael, do you think it's a turning point in the country has been reached in the fight against the Trump administration? I do think it's a turning point, and I'm speaking more from the perspective of the people's movement, like you know the demonstrators and the protesters outside, who about a week ago, week and a half ago, before the Lafayette Square incident, you know, holding the Bible upside down, looking like an antichrist, mm -hmm. as some and, and evangelicals may say, but um, you know, the people outside a week ago, I remember a lot of them having kind of that those slogans from about ten years ago when Trayvon Martin. Um, was killed, you know, the body cameras, you know, reform the police, you know, but more and more each day as the protests grow and it gets more diverse, the crowd and, and the demands are different and they're getting more radical, right? And they're connecting the fight against the police state against Trump as an individual and his administration. You're hearing chants such as, you know, vote them out, um, down with the electoral college. I've seen on a lot of signs. You know, they're, they're talking about change the system, change the system. And, I know, you know, it's a problem in this country where we're not exactly educated, but we don't have classes in socialism and Marxism growing up. But people are understanding, you know, I was taught my whole life that this is the most democratic and free country. And I go out there and I see that's not true. And so people are saying, finally, you know, whatever system we have, put a name on it, capitalism, neoliberalism, it's not working. So we got to change it. And that means changing, you know, the way our... Um, the, the, the way the Electoral College functions, the way um, the police function as an institution, you know, and so people are out there demanding revolutionary change. And I think that the Lafayette Square um, incident, you know, is really a turning point, not only for, you know, the divided ruling class, which you can see with people, you know, generals saying, you know, Trump is way out of line. He's taking this country in a direction of authoritarianism, totalitarianism, whatever you want to call it. It's the people's movement is really uniting. You know, we our party talks about working people uniting over issues and not around bourgeois candidates. I think it's happening. I think it's happening. First of all, it's, it's Lafayette Square and the use of military force on peaceful demonstrators, but not by itself. It's also that awful scene of them killing uh, a Lo a George Lloyd, right? It's also the scene of the brother getting uh, shotgun on the street in Georgia, right? It's also uh, Sister Taylor who was killed in her home by, by no knock police, right? It's all of that combined. And, that, and it's that, the, that, the, the fact that we have to fight even to get the, the officers who do it charged with anything. Um, yes. 
Uh, and, you know, time and again, this happens. And, you know, it's only been recently that, that you know, charges could be expected and only under the pressure of a people's movement that they charges could be expected within, you know, even some kind of reasonable time frame after the event. And it's still not a given. Yes, yes, yes. And, and, and I was so glad that the uh, senator from uh, Oregon, after uh, uh, Trump gave that speech calling for the use of the military, talking about dominating uh, the battle space and, uh, you know, uh, putting people in jail. And that was preceded. I'm going to label Antifa a terrorist organization. He's a terrorist. You know, and um, all of that combined, and then the marching of the militias on the state capitol, you, you put all of that together and what does it look like? It's not totalitarianism. It's no. fascism. It, 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 yes, it, it's um, the, 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 the growing threat of what the uh, senator from Oregon says is a fascist speech. You see, and um, but I want to look into this issue a little bit more about the Michael, the, the nature, the strength, and Scott of the demands on the street for radical reform of of policing, and it's not just radical reform of policing; it's also the whole. Inst system of institutionalized racism in the uh, criminal justice system, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. It's the prison, you know? Abolition. Um, I saw an article in the, uh, I, can't, well, I can't remember where it was. I saw an article written by, I think a couple members of the Minneapolis city council saying that they are pushing in the city council the, the disbanding of the Minneapolis police department and replacing wow. it with an organization based on um, outreach and sort of um, de-escalation and violence prevention and which is, I mean, even that, that, that something like abolition of police is being brought up in, in a city institution is, is a, a mark of, of how powerful this movement is and, and a mark of the fact that people are starting to see that the fight against white supremacy and the fight against um, state violence and the fight for democracy is not, you know, a kind of tepid, half-hearted, lower stage of struggle or whatever. It's a major revolutionary fight, as, as Michael was suggesting earlier. And, 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 and so you got that, the, the, the radical reform of the uh, legal system, right? That's one side of it. But then at the same time, you're dealing with the COVID uh, spawn economic and social crisis. Unemployment numbers came out this morning. Did anybody see them? They, they say that they're officially going to be a, a 20%, which means that they're probably more like 30%, because when they were talking about 14%, even the Secretary of the Treasury in yeah. Congress had to admit that it was really 25%, because they don't include people who had supposedly, you know, given up looking on work, looking for work. So, you got a, a, a political crisis of uh, a, a growing fascist threat. You have an, uh, a, a movement on the streets and in the communities, but it's not just on the streets, it's much broader than, than, than that for, uh, for justice, it's an uprising really. And then you got this economic crisis, you know, and what will it take, you know, 40%, 50% of black people unemployed, you know, big section of Latino have also unemployed, big section of white working class population unemployed. What will it take to solve that now? I mean, it's not, it's an emergency. Mm -hmm. That's what we're dealing with y'all. It's an emergency. And therefore we have to organize, organize, we've got to organize the unemployed, you know? And, and part of the question is, you know, facing us in this upcoming election is, are we going to have um, uh, a legislature and a, a president who will um, use state power to 
crush protest and try to, you know, tamp down any unrest or a government that will uh, attempt at least to do, to do whatever is possible right now to, to address these things. Um, yeah. And, and the question and is, can, the... Can, can Biden become the, the candidate? Can he rise to the height of the need and of the democratic movement right now? Well, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm not in favor of personalizing it. Yet at, at, at this stage, the Democratic Party convention hasn't happened yet. We don't know who the running mate is, but even assuming that it is uh, 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 your homeboy, Joe, <laughs> your, your, that's your dude, man. Don't try to say he's not. Don't laugh about it. <laughs> Wipe that smile off of your face. He is your home. No, I'm just joking. No, no, I'm actually not joking. He is your so the 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 the, the, the issue is the administration and Congress and uh, and to me and the social forces that put them in place and and the um, ability of the worker and people's movement, black people, Asian, Latino, women white working class people to force the administration to address the crisis. Because Larry Summers is saying, I don't think so, you know, we need to shut down. Some of these businesses ain't profitable. And, um, you know, so they're just gonna have to go. I mean, mm -hmm. you know, the airlines, they don't need the amount of employees that they got now, you know, it's crazy. Delta. Not, they don't need all these flight attendants. They ain't gonna need them for 10 years, he said. You know, it's be so interesting on. to look at uh, how many of the businesses he cites uh, have unionized workforces, because I know airlines Hello. do. Hello, that, 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 that's a big uh, a question. So uh, I think that uh, uh, the, the pressure, we have to be focused on building movements on the ground you know, independent, people-led, working class, Black, Latino, Asian, women-led movements on the ground that will compel the powers that be in the Democratic Party, in the Republican Party, whoever they, to defeat the lobbyists from Wall Street, who you know are already investing lots of money and they're going to be K Street. They're going to be in Congress making deals, trading favors. They got their good old boy network going on, trying to impose a platform that is favorable to capital, to big capital, to solve the crisis on the backs of the working class and people and not that they should pay for it the way that they need to pay for it. So these are some of the issues that are going to be debated at the National Committee meeting tomorrow. By the way, uh, Michael and Scott, we got a National Committee meeting tomorrow morning, tomorrow at noon. I think we're going to stream that bad boy live, at least the opening. Mm -hmm. So we want to invite everybody, uh, you know, uh, here on Facebook and to, you know, check it out, you know, and see what we're saying. Get some snacks because these things are long. And to also to also get involved for all of our listeners, you know, we're talking about building a people's movement. It's important to know that our party really is leading a lot of uh, good efforts in terms of unemployment councils. You can go to our website at cpusa.org and uh, sign up, you know, to, to help us with these unemployment councils. Um, mm. We're doing mutual aid for uh, uh, not only coronavirus victims and those who can't go outside because they're immunocompromised. Uh, you were down at the police station, weren't you? Yes, yes. In fact, we have comrades there right now in, in the uh, Bronx and Queens. You know, every morning we go out and we bring them uh, snacks and food and coffee, mm. you know, um, baby wipes because they're in the, those dirty cells all night with coronavirus, um, Tylenol, yeah. those kind of things. And, you know, and that's in addition to our marching that we do every day. So get involved. Get involved in any way you can. It's important to build this movement because only a people's movement can defeat fascism. It's not going to be, you know, one person like Joe Biden. It has to be the masses of working people on board. And I think we can do it. It's coming. And you got the last word. Uh, well, uh, good. Uh, have a great weekend. Stay safe. Stay healthy. Stay strong. Stay physically distant in these demonstrations, y'all. 
It's not easy. And when you get into a crowded space, get out of it. I don't care if you're 20 or 15 or 60, it's not safe. Right, Michael? Yes, take care of yourself. Right. We gotta survive this. Right, Scott? Yep, in this for the long haul. In it for the Later long haul. Take care, bye-bye.